but it is extremely unusual to be telling us that uh, the monarch has cancer. I don't think that's ever happened in in British royal history before. So um, so that is quite something. It's a sign of the times. But nevertheless, we don't know the type of cancer that the king has. And, um, uh, you know, the palace uh, maintains that he is, like anybody else, entitled to a degree of privacy. And, and, and that's fair enough. But of course, um, by not being specific, it leads to a, a considerable amount of conjecture on the part of the media and the public. We are led to believe, uh, specifically by the Prime Minister this morning, that the cancer has been caught in, in the very early stages. So that has got to be a good thing. I mean, as far as the House of Windsor is concerned, the the, the motto is business as usual. You know, they will they will um, keep calm and carry on. So the the king will continue with his administrative duties. The the red boxes will arrive every day that require his attention. Uh, meetings will take place. Uh, he'll see the prime minister, um, hopefully in in public, as long as um, there is no complication with his treatment. Um, we just won't see the king publicly. So um his his program for the spring hasn't been announced yet and clearly it won't be announced now we don't know what the timeline is we we don't know whether we're talking weeks or months i suppose it will depend on how well he responds to treatment as to uh, you know how quickly we get to see him out and about again so so clearly um his diary has been um put on hold um or at least the public aspect of it um uh, and that's a great shame, but, you know, it can't be helped. You know, it is very much a case of business as usual, as far as they're concerned. There is no reason to be alarmed at this stage, and and the, the institution will continue to function um, in the way you would expect it to function. Well, it was interesting that the um, Duke of Sussex responded um, so quickly um, well, he responded to the public announcement so quickly that the family will be aware of the problem for several days. So so it's not that the Duke of Sussex found it yesterday and dropped everything and, and ran to the airport. That isn't the case. But uh, but I think it is quite significant that he he is um, he, he is on his way to, to see his father. And, and that can only be a, a good sign. Um, you know, what will come of that um, remains to be seen. It's unlikely that we will be told anything officially by the palace so again a lot of conjecture will come into play um but we think the king and um, his younger son haven't seen each other since the coronation back in in may of last year so um it'll be a welcome meeting from from both sides and what it leads on to you know remains to be seen well, you know coming to the throne in your mid-70s was always going to present problems because of age and um you know a perhaps for most of us our health declines as we get older and that was going to perhaps be a challenge. I don't think anybody anticipated it would be charging quite so soon in, in the King's reign. You know, he's not been on the throne for, for two years and the irony is that he waited so long for this job um, uh, and, and yet when he gets it, you know, there, there are complications along the way. And of course, it's a different setup in the UK anyway because of the the um, um, anointing that the the king um, underwent at Westminster Abbey last year. So he has a contract with God, and you know he said at the time um, he came to the throne that um, you know he was there for as long as God um, spared him. I don't think he will go anywhere anytime soon, and um, I still think that abdication is not a word that is bandied about at at, at Buckingham Palace. Um, I mean, who knows what the coming years will will bring, but um, I think uh, with the best will in the world, Charles III will reign as his mother did and until the moment of his death.